Five years ago, we placed playtesters beneath an idling Half-Life 2 Strider. It was a really simple prototype, but the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. This experience convinced us we should pursue a Strider encounter in VR. And as a result, we built dozens of prototypes over the next few years. Some designs pressed playtesters into very close contact with the Strider. Some had a Strider chase them through a simple environment, or shoot at them through porous cover. In other cases, the Strider would destroy a wall the player was hiding behind or give a performance the player was meant to observe. A prototype built in 2017 scored the player directly off with a Strider in a quarry, combining many of our ideas into one experience. Based on the success of this prototype, the team moved on to building the shipping experience ahead of you, although it would take another three years of refinement to complete. Each iteration brought us a new set of rules and players' expectations. The Strider Encounter Ahead is a carefully crafted collection of beats shaped by our own ideas of what would be exciting and fun, refined over a long period of playtesting. Through many iterations of the Strider Encounter, we would find ourselves having functionally solved the problem, only to realize that we also had to fictionally contextualize the solution so that it made sense. For example, we designed this entire map to include combat with Combine soldiers. But how should we fictionally place them in this destroyed space? How could we put a disabled Strider close to the player? What were the Combine doing here prior to the vault collapse? This soldier was placed here to communicate to the player that some Combine were in the area investigating an antlion infestation before the vault fell on them. In fact, you can see some dead antlions nearby. If you listen closely, you'll hear the soldier trying to contact the rest of his squad, letting the player know that they are not alone and that there is likely to be more combat ahead. Although we could excuse a few random combine in this area left over from investigating the antlion infestation, we needed a way to justify the large squads of combine in the combat encounters that occur later in the level. These two Combine are part of a squad sent down looking for survivors after the vault collapse, and their dialogue is designed to inform the player that this strider they have found may not be dead. Fictionally, it is the player's combat with these two soldiers that alerts the rest of the Combine in this area to the player's presence. For many players, Striders are the most feared and powerful enemies in the Half-Life franchise, and we thought it would be interesting to flip player expectations on their head and experience what it would feel like to team up and cooperate with a Strider. Our initial concept was inspired by Aesop's fable of the Lion and the Mouse, with the player freeing a disabled Strider who would later help the player escape by clearing the way forward. Initially, the parking garage was a combine silo, and it was much easier fictionally to have some type of combine device which could constrain a Strider without injury. When the location changed to a collapsed parking garage, we constrained the Strider by trapping it in the elevator shaft, held down by the elevator car. After being freed, the injured Strider would lash out at anything nearby, combine and player alike, as it tried to escape. This was a strong story when told aloud, but expressing it in a way that was understood by players turned out to be difficult. Keeping the Strider around throughout the level alternating between injured and angry states as the player slowly picked their way through the garage was confusing to playtesters, and we had a very hard time trying to find the right balance. Playtesting feedback was really consistent around this. So although we loved the idea, we let it go in favor of a more straightforward and achievable dynamic of Hunter and Prey that eventually shipped. The year we spent pursuing the lion and a mouse idea wasn't wasted, however, as we created and refined many of the different story beats that shipped. We also crafted some performances and technology that led to the success of the final experience. The Strider encounter boils down to a set of performances and the Strider's AI-driven minigun. Maintaining the illusion that the Strider was aware of and hunting the player while delivering these performances required a delicate coordination between animation and AI systems. We used a variety of approaches to make the Strider feel like an intelligent creature hunting the player. Players in VR move very slowly by first-person shooter standards, so we have the Strider alternate between chasing performances, following the player through the level, and then hunting performances, focused on tracking and firing at the player, or looking for them. 
Triggering the different stages of this pursuit took a lot of playtesting. We paid close attention to how playtesters would move through the level and then built the triggers and iterated on the animations to support the most common behaviors. It was very much a back and forth conversation to evolve a beat into something that most players would believe the strider was truly hunting them. Early playtesters would grow weary of being shot at without any downtime or contrasting experiences. So we identified the beats that would create that contrast and layer them in when we saw playtesters become fatigued. Things like the strider bashing the wall, walking over you, chasing you up an elevator shaft, all acted as ways to break up the experience and surprise the player. Whenever we had feedback a playtester was growing or looked bored or fatigued, we would brainstorm different ways to insert these beats and then test it to verify that they were paced correctly. One of the tools we used was a sophisticated look at system on the strider. The system tracked the player and would procedurally orient different parts of the strider to face the player. The body, minigun, and gauss cannon all had different lookouts to break up the effect when the strider lost or acquired the player. These could be independently enabled or disabled at specific times to make it feel like the strider was directly addressing the player. In each animation of the sequence, the lookout on the minigun and body would be enabled or disabled based on whether the strider should be able to see the player at that point. It was important to communicate clearly to the player that they were being hunted by the strider at this point. We wanted players to see the strider dust itself off and fixate on them, so that there would be no doubt that they were now the prey. This elevator ride was a useful tool to achieve this, as it is one of the few moments of the game that we have a captive audience. The elevator door facing the strider was carefully designed to provide enough protection, so that players would feel safe, but enough visibility to see the strider's performance. During development, we talked a lot about the experience of the Strider minigun blasting through the walls and floors of the parking garage while hunting the player, but we weren't sure we would be able to deliver destructible cover until around six months prior to shipping. To address this, we designed the destructible cover to visually communicate that it was being broken down prior to actually fracturing and breaking. Initially, the cover would look like an unremarkable piece of concrete or other building material, but when it took sufficient damage, it would start to visibly crack and throw off dust particles. When the same piece of cover took further damage, it would then fracture into pre-cut physics objects and generate more dust and debris particles. Through playtesting, we determined how much damage the cover should be able to take before breaking down and forcing the player to move. In the end, the destructible cover system allowed us to deliver on our goal of giving players the impression that the Strider was capable of tearing through the parking garage with its minigun as it pursued them. In this area of the map, we began hearing from some playtesters that they found the minigun firing monotonous. Originally, the gun would fire at a set rate, regardless of the player's behavior. To address the monotony, we made several improvements to the Strider AI running just the minigun. The minigun will fire if it sees the player, but take a moment to acquire them. Play an acquired sound to warn them they have locked on, and then stitch the bullets towards the player in its first volley. The minigun volleys themselves were broken up to become more staccato, with random intervals in between volleys. If the player ducks behind cover, the strider will keep firing where it last saw the player for a short period. These changes to the minigun behavior eliminated the monotony and gave players the impression that they were fleeing a living creature. To keep the strider engagement interesting throughout the level, we knew that we wanted to challenge the player's understanding of what the strider was capable of. We identified this upcoming room as a space where most players felt they understood the strider's capabilities and built this next beat to surprise them. To create the door frame bash moment, we used the strider's animation to drive an offline destruction simulation that could be played back by the game engine in real time. We coupled this with particle effects and physics impulses on interactive physics objects in the room to make the player feel unsafe. To fully sell the idea that the Strider has been searching for and has found the player, we gave the Strider a moment to pause after tearing away the wall to look at the player before it started to fire again. When playtesting the Strider encounter, we learned that players enjoyed fighting a challenging enemy but responded negatively if they took damage in a way that seemed unfair. To address this, we used audio to communicate the state of the strider. For example, when the strider did not have line of sight to the player, it would emit a periodic hunting sound. This sound was meant to communicate to the player that they were currently safe, but that the strider was still there. 
Once the strider had seen the player, it would switch to its chasing state and make corresponding chasing sounds. When the strider was ready to start firing at the player, it would emit a target acquired sound before firing. Players quickly learned this pattern of sound cues and no longer complained about being caught unaware of the strider's targeting state. We needed to familiarize the player with the Strider's Gauss cannon firing sequence, so they'd be able to recognize it when they saw it again later in the map. This particular area of the map went through a lot of iteration, as we searched for ways to reliably place the player in the right spot, at the right time, looking at the right thing, the Gauss cannon, as it charged up and fired. To achieve this, we ultimately settled on using a two-handed roller door. It requires the player to stand in a specific position and orientation, and occupies their hands so we know they aren't teleporting or interacting with anything else. We even know the precise moment that the door clears their eyeline, so we can be assured that they're going to see what we want them to see. Russell. When the central theme of this map was the lion and the mouse, the encounter with the strider ended at this point the Strider simply exited off into the sunset. We intended for the Strider to reappear in a subsequent fight, perhaps even attacking the Combine alongside the player. But this idea was only pursued briefly before being cut. The problem was that playtesters felt cheated that they didn't get to destroy the Strider after being hunted and harassed by it for so long. In the final map, once the player steps into the rat maze below, the Strider reappears and begins hunting the player again. Because Alex does not possess any weapons that can damage the Strider, we explored a variety of ways that the player could take out the Strider using something found in the environment. These included ideas like triggering missiles on a downed Combine helicopter, using a Combine mortar emplacement, or kicking off some type of physics event to sweep the Strider's legs out and kill it. We built prototypes of many of these ideas, and eventually narrowed down to the mounted gun solution that shipped. It was simple, repeatable, and was one of the easier solutions to train under fire. In this sequence, we wanted the player to end the encounter by killing the Strider in a dramatic boss fight using a weapon found in the environment. This meant that we had to introduce a new weapon which was more powerful than the player's equipped weapons and which had to remain in the environment after the fight. A mounted gun on an abandoned Combine vehicle made the most sense, and after some initial tests with a downed Combine helicopter repurposed from Half-Life 2, we settled on the armored personnel carrier, since one had already been built for use in another section of the game. Since the gun mechanism itself would be seen for the first time while under pressure from the Strider, it had to have an aiming and firing mechanism that the player would understand immediately. We prototyped a variety of designs, from a machine gun that auto-fired as soon as the player grabbed the handle, to a gun that fired a sticky bomb that had to be detonated by the player after it had hit its target. The auto-firing machine gun was too simple to use and lacked dramatic effect, and the extra interaction required to detonate the sticky bomb was too much to teach the player while under duress. We settled on a design that requires one hand to aim and another to both reload and fire. Requiring the player to push the firing mechanism all the way forward to reload was necessary to prevent the player from firing too rapidly. The gun's shell reloading animation is directly driven by the player's motion and communicates to the player that they must move their hand all the way forward to reload before being able to pull it back to fire. Alex, 